Hello and welcome to today's video. As you have already read in the title, today we are going to talk about the purfling. We are going to see the different types of purfling that exist, the different materials used to make it and how to make it, and also why we put purfling on the instruments. First of all, let's see why we put the purfling on the instrument. The main reason we use it is to protect the blades, especially the top, but also the back, and especially in the lower and upper regions. Let me grab an instrument. This lower part and this upper part of the top especially, but also of the back, are pretty vulnerable. If you bump the instrument here, it is very easy that the crack will go all the way up. This part here doesn't really need it, but upper and lower parts really do. As you know, when you layer pieces of wood with a grain perpendicular to each other, it becomes much stronger. This is also how plywood is made, and as you may know, 25 mm or 1 inch of plywood is much stronger than a solid piece of wood of the same thickness. The grain of the purfling is in this way and is perpendicular to the grain of the wood. That means that the edge of the top and back are much stronger than without the purfling. And so if you bump the instrument it probably won't crack or maybe it cracks until the purfling but it won't go all the way up, breaking the plate into two pieces. The second reason why we use purfling is of course decorative and aesthetic. These two very thin lines along the edge accentuate the line of the model of the instrument and the corners. But you may also have seen instruments with a double purfling. Magini and Brescian violin makers did that a lot. And even instruments that have a bigger decorative piece on the back, mainly, because on the top you don't see it because of the fingerboard and tailpiece. Now let's have a look how purfling is made. Mainly, purfling is made out of three layers of material. Two black ones with a white one in the middle. Sometimes you can even find instruments that have five layers, but again, black, white, black, white, black. So black at the outer sides. Purfling is made out of sheets of wood, like these two that I have here, or fiber, fiber made out of wood. These parts that I have here are maple. This is white maple and this is stained maple. So it is a piece like that, that is made black with colorant or some kind of ink. All the purfling that I could find before I started recording this video is made with a black part made out of maple that is colored. Originally it was in ebony. Ebony is very hard to work with and breaks very easily. To make the purfling in the olden days they used a piece of wood and a plane and they planed pretty thick uh, parts out of it that they could glue to each other. With maple it is hard but it is it is possible to do it, but ebony is really very very hard, so it is very hard to plane one nice piece that doesn't break. And then when you have the purfling, uh, ebony doesn't bend very well. So when you heat it up and you want to make that tight bend for the corners, it breaks very easily. The maple sheets do bend much easier. But you also have a purfling that is made out of fiber. Mainly the black parts, but I have also seen uh, purfling that is entirely out of fiber. I don't know exactly how to make these fibers, maybe uh, in a similar way as they make paper out of wood. And then they make sheets, the black ones get painted, the white ones remain white and they glue them together. Now if you want to make your own purfling, you can buy these kinds of sheets. I bought these ones from Dictum. And they are in different thicknesses. I have here a white piece that is 0.3 millimeters and a black piece that is 0.6 millimeters. I know that Revolta has even thicker pieces that you can plane down or sand down to the thickness that you would like. If you want to make your own purfling, you could use a piece of maple that you cut out thin pieces, like this one, which is to make the ribs. This is for cello ribs, so it is pretty thick. You can go even thinner, like for a violin. And then you can 
sand it or plane it down to this thickness. I think that planing it down to the 0.3 millimeters is almost impossible. You will need a machine like this one, I don't have it unfortunately, to sand the sheets of wood to the desired thickness. And as soon as you have the thickness for the black ones that you want, then you have to color them. And mainly they do that by putting the sheets into a bath of stain and leaving them there for hours or maybe days so that the color goes through the wood because as you know as soon as you have put the purfling into the instrument you have to cut a part and you want it to be colored throughout otherwise you will go back to white. A colleague of mine that lives close to Cremona, Ioannis, makes always his own purfling and he sent me a couple of pictures that you can see now. As you see he glues the layers together and then he cuts it into the thin pieces used on the instrument. Take a minute if you want to visit his Instagram account where he puts a lot of pictures of his beautiful instruments. And of course, if you are looking for a new violin, don't hesitate to contact him. And finally, let's have a look to the different types of purfling that you can find. As I said at the beginning, you have purfling made out of wood or made out of fiber. And then, as you can imagine, there are different thicknesses. Of course, purfling for double bass and cello are thicker than for violin or viola, but also within the instrument you can find purfling that is thinner or thicker, but also that have different measurements for the black or white parts. You can find purfling that has thicker black and a bit thinner white, or thinner black and a bit larger white parts. The wooden purfling is mainly made out of maple, as I said, but you can also find purfling made in pear wood that is a bit darker, that means that there is less difference between the white and the dark part of the purfling, as you can see in this picture. So that's it for today's video, I hope that you could learn something about the purfling. This is the pear wood purfling that I bought from Dictum, and as you see it bends very well. Can you see it? Yes, you can see it. Many thanks to the Patreons for supporting the channel, many thanks to everyone who visits my Etsy shop, for my clocks and my bottle openers and I hope to see you in the upcoming video that will be a repair series and I'm working on a cello that has a hole in the ribs. So see you next time. Bye bye!